Our guest today is director Tom Stewart and his short film, Good Boy, inspired by a personal experience of grief, has officially been shortlisted for a 2024 Academy Award. Now, the hotly anticipated quirky short film takes you on a lighthearted journey of a desperate young man and his mother in his old VW van, a dead pigeon in the passenger seat, and a growing sense of desperation. Good Boy is the debut in the director's chair for Tom Stewart. The comedy drama stars three-time BAFTA winner Ben Wishaw, as you may recognize as Q from the movie Skyfall, and two-time SAG Award winner Marion Bailey from Netflix's The Crown. Now, Good Boy has also qualified to be considered for a BAFTA for Best British Short Film, and again, a possible 2024 Academy Award for Best Live Action Short Film. So, ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome writer, director, and actor Tom Stewart and his short film, Good Boy, to the show. Welcome, Tom. Hey, thank you so much for having me. How are you doing? Man, I'm doing great, and I have to kind of kick off the first question here with you because I understand that your film, Good Boy, was inspired by a personal experience of grief. Can you kind of share a bit of your own personal story? Yeah, very happily. I was I was uh, very lucky to have a very warm, anarchic, uh, intelligent, cheeky, kind mum uh, who I was very, very close to, um, and she died far too young at the age of uh, 69, completely unexpectedly, um, at the beginning of the pandemic from from uh, a cancer that none of us knew she had, including her. Um, so it was all very fast and scary and um, very, very, very sad. And so this this film is in a way me trying to figure that out, how to, how to sort of uh, how how to to work out what I do without her, and how how does anyone carry on in their lives when they've experienced such a big loss like that? You know, um, so this is me in a way, a small way of me uh, celebrating her, and it's a bit of a love letter to her, but it's also me trying to work out how to move on forwards uh, in life without her. You know, there is when I watched the film, there was a lot to unpack. <laughs> and so I, I spent time, I, I watched it the first time just to kind of get the whole sense of the film. And then I go back to start breaking it apart. And, mm -hmm. you know, I noticed that grief, you know, grief is such a strange emotion. It's basically love looking for a place to go. And mm. I saw quite a bit of that love element in your film. Uh, how was it, uh, how was it trying to balance grief and love in this film? Oh, I think that's a beautiful uh, way of describing it, actually. I think that's exactly right. I think that's exactly what grief is. Um, yes, well, in a way, it's exactly what the character is struggling with. It's, it's uh, does he stay with, he, the, the dilemma for him is, does he stay with his mum and in his grief and therefore a bit in the past? Or does he try to move on um, and, and let her go a little bit? um and and allow the love in and knowing that the love will never leave um and, and therefore sort of put one foot in front of the other and carry on with his life so i think that's exactly it uh, that's exactly the sort of dichotomy that he's in and i think part of the fear i had with grief is that if you if i really faced my grief if i really looked at it um would i lose the connection with the, with my mum you know, because part of the pain is a it feels like a reminder of the person you've lost. And so if you get rid of that, or if you try to get rid of it, then do do you lose some connection with that person as well? Does that make sense? Yes, it actually makes sense because there's a there's a part in the film. Uh, and for those who haven't seen, it, I don't really want to give spoiler alerts, but yeah. and, and you bring it up early. So I'm going to go ahead and ask you this because. There are two very important elements that I noticed that really helps people who are grieving. Mm. There's the scene in which Danny gets out of the van and there's a fork in the road. Yeah. Then the sign that that if you if people take time to the sign that one comes to part is letting go and the other part is moving on. Um 
Was that the message you were trying to convey when Danny was standing there in front of his van? Yeah. And I noticed that fork in the road and I'm like, wait a minute, that's a clue. <laughs> it's absolutely a clue. You've spot on with it. I'm so pleased, Ward. Yeah, that's exactly right. And it's exactly how I felt when I was writing it and then also directing it. And still a little bit now, you know, a couple of years down the line, I still, it's still that dichotomy of that, that difficulty of do I, I can stay in the past and I can try really hard to keep hold of this person that I've lost and, and shut out the rest of the world and the rest of life. Or I can find another place to put them in, in because uh, they'll never leave, um, and find a place to put them inside myself and move on in this direction towards life. You know, which of course is what my mum would want for me, and of course it's what um, I think most uh, uh, loving parents want for their kids. You know, it, um, I, I think it's very tempting to stay in your grief and to be stuck um and to feel stuck and and the next once you've done that stage of grieving the next stage is to go okay how do i carry this uh, pain with me but move on into the world and um so yes you're you're spot on that's exactly what um i intended you know well you, as i as i watched that particular scene i replayed it again because i'm like wait a minute there's something else there and danny's mother was giving him the nod while stand, mm -hmm. while he was standing in, at the fork in the road. And she's letting him know it's okay to move mm -hmm. on, you know. And it's something that many people feel guilty about when they are grieving over a loss in their life. You know, some people feel guilty about moving on, but it doesn't mean that you're forgetting them. Was was that the, a little a bit of the synopsis in that scene? Absolutely. And I think there's a, a reading of the whole film where maybe because there's places where the, the mum is quite irritating in, in the film and there's an argument for maybe she's trying to irritate him a little bit to sort of push him on to, to the place where he gets to at the end where she is saying, uh, yeah, go on, go on, go. I, I'll always be here, but go on, go walk down that path and uh, live your life. You know, yeah, absolutely. You know, and and I that's what I loved about your film. Um, you you made it quirky, you <laughs> made it humorous, and at the same time, here you are showing grief and loss and love, and and I think people need, and in a way, uh, people need to learn how to smile again, how to laugh again. Um, yeah even though there's loss. And I think you brought that perfectly through in this film, uh, Good Boy. I mean, I loved it. Oh, thank you so much. I can't tell you how much it means. I mean, on a, on a professional level as a filmmaker, of course, I'm just delighted that people are responding to it and that, you are, that you've got the essence of the film. And, and then on a personal level, of course, it just means the world to me. You never know when you're trying to create something personal uh, uh you know and you're, i'm sat here in the in a dark room somewhere trying to write it out you, know, you have no idea if it's ever gonna reach anyone else or if it's ever gonna have meaning for anybody else so on on lots of levels i'm delighted <laughs> well you know you know i had to go back you know this is what i love about short films is you can sit there and watch them over and over and over again and yeah. uh because i love how brilliant so many filmmakers have become and, you know, hiding little things in the background and, and bringing little secrets uh, and nuances within the storytelling for the viewer and the audience. to hopefully they'll pick it up and find a much deeper meaning meaning. Now you placed, and I noticed this, you placed multiple characters in the film, which was quite brilliant in the art of storytelling. You built this story literally brick by brick. I mean, how did you come up with the idea of the doctor, the nurse, the priest, even the undertakers, and then even the even in the guy uh, in the store? Yeah, the, well, the, the, the idea was, and for anyone that hasn't seen it, it's about a guy that the film is about a guy that's grieving and he's trying to get on with his life, and these sort of odd characters from his past keep appearing only to him 
uh, and sort of, and they sort of scupper and confuse his day and and uh, ruin his progress throughout the day. And and as they as as you said, uh, some of them are doctors and nurses and funeral directors. And and the idea was that these are all um, uh, different uh, memories of of different parts of of the Danny's grief that he hasn't yet processed. And for me, it, it's very personal because I, I, when I was grieving, I would be trying to, you know, buy uh, cereal at the supermarket or, or whatever. And, and I'd be thinking about the cereal and then something, uh, a, an awful memory of the doctor that looked after my, my mum when she was dying would suddenly appear, you know, out of nowhere. And it's a kind of, it, it felt like an ambush. So it felt like grief was ambushing me when I was, wasn't even thinking about it. I'd be doing something else and it'd be like, wham, here's the nurse that told you your mum was going to die. You know what I mean? So that was, and I'd never seen that idea of grief um, represented before. And it, it, it interested me both on a personal level, like I wanted to sort of figure that out. I wanted to express that. I'm like, God, what's going on here? Um, and also, I, as a storyteller, it interested me because I thought it was an interesting device. Here's someone who's um, just getting on with their day and then these characters keep, uh, you know, appearing and, um, uh, and changing the course of, 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 his, uh, of his day, you know. Um, so, yeah, that was the, that's the idea behind it. You know, and, and I can understand because when we lose someone, there are those people that were part of that journey and like you said you could go to the grocery store and maybe run in face to face with the actual nurse or the doctor or whoever but then you know even when i when i lost my father i was standing in a store one day and my father was always known he, he would wear like a, a red plaid shirt and tan slacks and i rounded the corner down this aisle one day of uh, years ago and this older gentleman was sitting there in a red plaid shirt and tan slacks. And I just literally stopped and I went. And the first thing that hit me was like, Dad, <laughs> you know, yeah. and it just hits you. And like you said, you know, sometimes, you know, you know, the vision of your mother pops up or maybe you turn and you see somebody and it, someone that almost looks just like them and wearing the same thing. And yeah. It, and it just hits you out of the clear, like you said, out of the clear blue, and then you're standing there processing it. it exactly that, and 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 I think those. Well, I'm I'm four years into my grief, but I feel like those things will probably never go away. They'll always be, um, uh, a, like smell. I think is very strong. You know, you'll you'll smell um, a perfume that your mum wore, or you know, whatever. Um, but I suppose as you get further into grief, you learn to, those things become a joy rather than a pain. And when they first appear, it's like really painful to be reminded, to, to have a memory of the nurse that looked after your mum or something. Um, but I think as time goes by, I don't know, I, I, they feel more positive. They feel less um, like an attack and more like a reminder of the person you loved. Yes, because but, then you start seeing maybe if a memory pops up or you do see someone that reminds you of, you know, of a loved one, then it becomes to where you get a smile on your face and you go, oh, I remember that time or, oh, they always wore that. And and so that grief slowly turns into a bit of a happy memory and yeah. joy as time goes by. So the pain is is slightly going away. You know, we're never going to miss it. I mean, we're always going to miss them. Yeah. Um, but the emotion starts to change. And and Tom, this is where my light bulb literally went off watching your film. I was watching it a second time, but then when I watch, especially short films, and and watching my third or uh, you know a second or third time, I pause them and I'm like, okay, let me let me look at the scene. Am I getting it? Am I missing something? Uh, or I'll replay it. But with your film, I, I literally played it scene by scene. But then, one of the most touching moments in the film, when, because when I first saw the film, I'm like, okay. But the ending, I was like, okay, what am I missing here? But then the most touching moment in the whole film to me 
was when Danny was by the stream and he put on his mother's coat. That little moment when he leaned over and he smelled the sleeve of her coat because he had put the coat on. Yeah. That's when the light bulb moment for me came on. I went, whoa, wait a minute. His mother's gone. Uh huh. Because yeah. you wrote this so well that I'm thinking, hey, this is great. You know, son and mother, they're they're traveling around in this little van and and uh she's in the back and he he seems perturbed and irritated and frustrated, but she's always positive, which I really <laughs> love that sit because she's positive and and that's when the whole title really hit me like good boy. Mm. He's telling him over and over again, you're a good boy. But when he leaned over and smelt her sleeve, that's when I went, he lost his mother. Yeah, it's exactly where, and that's exactly where I wanted you to, to feel it. I think, you know, um, th there's a lot in the film that uh, I wanted it to be fun. And I, I wanted, to, I wanted uh, the audience to be like, something's going on here, but I, ca I can't work out what, I don't know what, strange things are happening. I don't really know why. And then there's a turning point, which is exactly the point that you just described, where and it's interesting watching people in uh, screening rooms or at the cinema who haven't who don't know anything about the film and they're laughing and because I have to say we we should say it's also a comedy it's very hopefully quite lighthearted as well and um, uh, and, and you see people really laughing and that until that point and then there's a you feel like the shift emotional shift happen in the in the room um, and then people go. Oh, the sort of penny drops and you're like oh okay this is you know so i'm delighted again ward i i'm, I'm so pleased I feel like that's exactly right that's exactly what i hoped well I, I really wish i would have caught the first time because the acting was the the interaction of the actors was so smooth and and flowed so well that i didn't catch it the first time and then when when I replayed it and I just stopped the scene, actually, I what was funny, Tom, is that as he leaned over to put the coat on, I'm like, okay, it's England, it's cold, and then he puts it on, and I'm like, okay, he put his mother's coat on, okay, he, he, he's cold, but then when he leaned over and he had to smell her sleeve, I went, mm. I went, wait a minute, wait a minute, I was sitting there <laughs> like, whoa, play that again. So I played yeah. it again. I was like, oh, and that's when the Eureka moment hit me. And I was like, oh my gosh. And like you said, that's when you get the moment because it's, you made that moment so poignant, but you made it so small. Well, that's also um testament to the brilliant actor, Ben Wishaw, because I, I you know, I, I gave him the note to do that, but he's such a subtle actor that in, a, you know, in another actor's, um, uh, if another actor was given that uh, direction, they, they may have made it too big a moment and too obvious. Um, but you give a note like that to a brilliant actor like Ben Wishaw, and he just plays it so subtly um, and so truthfully that you almost miss it. <laughs> but it's there and you feel it, you know. So it is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm delighted that you're, you know, uh, reacting in the way you are and I feel so thrilled, but I also have to share the credit and say, um, it's an awful lot to do with the brilliant actors that I was given, you know? <laughs> well, yeah, because, you know, there, you know, when I, when I look back and I'm, I'm thinking, I'm putting the whole film into my head right now from beginning to end. There's the, there's that moment in which Ben smells the sleeve. There's yeah. the moment when his mother is sitting in the van and, and I love, she has the sweetest smile and <laughs> Marion Bailey plays this part so well. But when she just looks at him, mm. she doesn't say anything. She just nods. And I was mm. like, oh, she's giving him the okay. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly that. Exactly that. And again, you, you, you could give that note to, I could give that as a director, give that note to a different actress and they could overplay it. But again, the sort of, um, Marion Bailey is such a beautiful actress and has so much taste and skill that it she just does it very subtly and it feels um it's all the more powerful because of it because it just feels very honest well you know? what was it uh, you know for you this is your your first film to direct 
Yeah. Uh, what was that experience like? I have to tell you, I loved every single second of it <laughs> and continue to do so. I, I, I knew I was going to enjoy it and I was really excited about it. Oh, I was also, also very, very nervous. Um, but I just loved it. I loved it. And I've been an actor for um, uh, almost 20 years, I think. And um, I've worked with all sorts of brilliant people and I've had some fantastic experiences. Um, but this was my first time being at the helm of something and, and, and directing something. And um, I was just blown away by it. I just absolutely felt uh, in my element and I just really enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> well, so are you are you ready to to direct another short, or are you wanting to push and go for a feature film? Well, I've, uh, it's interesting. I, I I'm going to see. I've got two feature films that I've written. Uh, one that I'm writing, I should say, and one that's written that's with producers. Um, and fingers crossed, we get the green light for those, and those are features that I would direct. Um, but as you know, uh, getting films financed and made can take a really really long time. Um, so I may make, I've had an idea for another short film recently, so I'm just in the process of writing that. So while I'm waiting for those to happen, uh, I may make, I probably will make another short film, um, that I'll direct in, in the meantime, just to well, keep those, um, cause I love it so much. So I just want to keep doing it. <laughs> well, I have to say, Good Boy is such a great film. I was wondering, is there any thought of making that a full feature film or maybe yeah, a, a streaming series yeah i think so and and actually it does exist as a, uh, i wrote uh, uh, an episode uh, uh, thought about it as a as a streaming series and wrote the first episode and that's being considered by some exciting um uh broadcasters um but yes i also think if that fails then i i I probably will try and make it into a feature. And what was lovely is like one of the first things when we said cut and on, on the final day and uh, I drove Ben Wishaw to, um, to, to the pub. We were all going to the pub to, to celebrate afterwards. And one of the first things he said was, um, I'm not ready to let go of this character. I, I want to, I want to, you know, I, I want to keep playing him, which is, was music to my ears because that's exactly what you want your, um, uh, you know, big named, brilliant, brilliantly talented lead actor to be saying to you on <laughs> on the final day of your shoot. It, it was such a compliment because it meant that not only did he connect with the material in the way that he did, but he also really loved it and he loved working on it. Um, so yeah, I think we're all none of us are quite ready to let it go yet. So I, I don't know which way it's going to go yet. But if you turn this into a streaming series, so. Um... Netflix and Hulu and the rest of you out there should be listening and watching. This is a f this film needs to be a series because I can see Ben, I can see Marion, I can see all the other characters. I would watch this. Well, I'll tell you the truth, I would probably I would binge watch this. It's oh, that thank good. You so much. No, and I'm and I'm being really sincere and honest here, Tom. I would watch this. This because here in America, you know, we, we have, you know, great series. But in the reality of the thing here in the States, we all really love British comedy. It's the best. And, oh. and, and to mix in a little bit of the drama and the emotion, I can see why Ben wasn't ready to let it go. I think he fell in love with the character. I, I think he did a bit. Yeah. I th well, thank you so much. That's all lovely to say. And, and it's definitely what interests me the most is, is uh, I, because I feel like it's the, the tone is the, is the most true to my life, which is that light and dark exists at the same time. So there's, there's moments of uh, hilarity and funny things happening at the most awful times in your life. And, and similarly, <laughs> Something awful will be happening, you know, something fantastic will be happening and then something awful will happen. So I feel like comedy and drama are, are uh, interwoven in our lives, you know, and that's sort of definitely how I un understand my life anyway. Well, <laughs> so for I, me, well yeah, because what I loved was that you didn't make it a dark comedy. You made it a lighthearted comedy drama. So it draws yes. more people in. It puts a smile on their face, you know, and, and I, and I guarantee you when you were sitting there in a theater with the audience, 
when he shot that pigeon, I bet the whole place <laughs> just roared in laughter because it was really funny. Ah, oh, thank you. Yes, they did, and they do. They find it very surprising and funny to them, which is um, which is wonderful. I mean, it's exactly the response that I was hoping for. Um, yeah, so that that's definitely what interests me anyway is is um comedy and comedy and drama mixed together and it doesn't have to all be dark and heavy it can be uh i, I think a, a great way certainly i feel like it's an audience member is when something makes me laugh i relax and so then i relax into the world of the tv series or the film or whatever it is or the book even you know and then once i'm relaxed then i open up and so therefore i can engage with what the film or the, the TV series is trying to um, uh, say to me, you know? So I feel like the more relaxed an audience is, the more likely they are to go with you on the dramatic or sad moments that are to come, you know? Yeah, because they feel more invested it, in the story, I think. Yeah, because you made the... You made the... And I, I want, there's not really sad moments. Um, there's poignant moments in the film and yeah and you made it to where we go along this journey and even at the end we still smile we still feel good our heart is warmed so we love that but for you how did you go about casting ben and marion well i was really lucky in that i knew ben a long time ago so we were actors uh that came out of drama school at the same time but different drama schools but um, we sort of, we'd, we had lots of mutual friends. So I'm talking 20 years ago or something. And, uh, and we were good friends, but then we didn't see each other for a long time. Um, but when the, when my mum died, in fact, he heard about it and he knew my mum. And we met up uh, at some point during the pandemic when we were allowed to, to meet up and go for walks outside and here in London. And we went for a big walk together along the Thames and talked about everything that had happened in our lives and I was telling him everything that was happening in my writing career and it was all exciting and and he sort of said out of the blue I I think you should try directing um and I it, I was sort of he gave voice to something that I'd been thinking about but I hadn't been brave enough to say out loud to myself um and it was the sort of the kick up the bum as we would say in, in britain um to to that i needed to go and um and write the thing so i went home and wrote it and then of course a few months later i sent it to him and um uh and thank god thank goodness he loved it and 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 came on board you know so it's, it, really this is uh ben wishaw's fault <laughs> <laughs> well you see the Tom, I, I love stories like this because everybody has a dream and, and I know a lot of actors, they, they're fine with acting, but then some, they keep looking beyond the camera that is looking at them. They're looking at the director's chair and I thinking, could I do that? And yeah. then you have someone like Ben that just pops up technically out of nowhere and goes, Hey, <laughs> you ought to try your hand at acting. That's that's a clue. That's a sign. That's a confirmation to go for it. And you did. And I was also impressed too. And I'm, I'm going to agree with actress Tilda Swinton here that your film is a beautiful film. And for me, it rightly deserves a place on the Oscar shortlist. What did it mean to you for Tilda to say how beautiful it was? Oh, I mean, that was just unbelievable i mean uh we, we screened we, we shot this film i should say on um a place called worthy farm which is which uh, every year gets turned into uh, glastonbury festival which is this world famous it's the biggest music festival um in the world um and uh we were lucky enough we were given permission to film there so then we were invited to screen the film at the actual festival um or or, or an early version of the film and so we're in this big cinema. It's like a big circus tent that has a huge cinema screen in it. And everyone sits on the floor to watch it. And it just so happened that we were programmed to show our short film before um, the British premiere of Wes Anderson's um, uh, Asteroid City, which Tilda Swinton is, the, is uh, in. And so Tilda Swinton was there. And so we, Ben and I got up on the stage to introduce it. 
Everyone watched the film for the first time. That was the first audience that had ever seen it. And then Tilda Swinton got up to introduce her film, uh, but before she did, complimented ours. And, and I was just like, <laughs> it was uh, one of the most extraordinary moments uh, in my life. Um, because here's an actor, an actress that I just couldn't admire more, you know. Um, and uh, she didn't need to comment on the film, you know, but she, she did, she felt compelled to. So it, it was just wonderful for that to be the first audience that ever saw it. And for then Tilda Swinton to be part of that audience and say that was just, I mean... You could, I mean, I couldn't possibly ask for more. Oh, I, I completely agree. For you, though, how does it feel to be on the Oscar shortlist? Because that's a pretty high honor for directing your first film. Well, it's almost impossible for me to articulate how much it means to me. I have to tell you that I, I grew up um, in, in East London and, and I had quite a, 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 tricky, a, a tr tricky time at school. And um, I, I feel I found film sort of saved saved me i found a sense of community and everything through watching films and i used to stay up every night uh that the oscars were on and i would watch them you know without my mum and dad knowing because i'd have it on really quiet because for us it was like 4 a.m or whatever in the morning and i would watch it the whole thing just mesmerized hoping that one day i would i would be there and so it's i can't even articulate it it's the 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 most uh, ridiculously wonderful thing that's ever ever happened to me <laughs> to well, be on, on the shortlist. You know, I I try not to be biased with a lot of the films, a lot of the directors, because everybody puts so much work into it. But Tom, I, I, I'm going to have to say, not only do I want you to be nominated, <laughs> I would love to actually see you win. Oh, would. <laughs> just because the way this film, because of this film, I would give anything to see you be announced as a winner at the Academy <laughs> Awards be so I can hear you thank your mother. Oh, thank you, Ward. <laughs> <laughs> because to me, that would be, that would be, the most poignant, mo that would be the icing on the cake for this mm -hmm. film. Because for you, it's a personal journey. And yeah. I think that's the only way you can cap this, this journey is to actually hear your name called. And hey, we're going to find out here in the next few weeks. We certainly are. So fingers crossed. <laughs> <laughs> That's the such a kind thing to say. Thank you so much. I really, really, really appreciate that. Well, can, can can the general public, is there a place that they can see Good Boy? Uh, not currently, but very, very soon. So um, I, I will keep you and your audience updated because um, I, I would love everyone as, as much as possible to, to see it and to share it. That's the point in... Uh, making a film is to, uh, I mean, awards and all of this accolades are just mind-blowingly wonderful. Um, and the, but the point of making this is to share it and for audiences to see it and hopefully reflect on their own lives and honour th the people that they've lost as well. So uh, the answer, the, the shorter answer to that question is yes, it will be available very soon. <laughs> well, well, I will say this, ladies and gentlemen, we are the good boy. Wow. I mean, if you love film like I do, you when it when you have the opportunity, you have got to see Tom Stewart's Good Boy. Now, if you are watching or listening and you belong to the Academy and you are a voting member, you need to sit down, you need to watch Good Boy, and you need <laughs> to vote with your heart. Okay? I mean, this film has a stellar cast. I mean, Ben Wishaw. Marion Bailey. The cinematography is excellent. The storytelling, yeah. it flows with grace. And Tom Stewart's oh. writing and directing is simply brilliant and actually, for me, refreshing. And oh, I think. Tom, I mean, you created a film that makes us smile, makes us feel good inside 
allows people with loss to finally move on and let go without feeling guilty or shame. And in yeah. a way, you created a, a great film. It's got a very powerful healing quality to it. Uh, well, thank you so much. Thank you so much. That's everything I could possibly hope for someone to say about the film. That's exactly my, my hope in putting it out there is that it does all of those things. Thank you. Oh, Tom, I, I, am, I am absolutely honored to have you on the program today and to share uh, one of the best live action shorts that we've seen this Oscar season. Good boy. Thank you so much, Ward. Will you have me back on again? Hey, you are welcome back anytime you want. And if I hear <laughs> and when and if your name is announced as a nominee, you better be back here and you end up holding Oscar in your hands. You got to come <laughs> back again, too. <laughs> I, I promise you I will. <laughs> and bring Ben and Marion with you. And we'll just have a party. Okay, sounds good. Sounds <laughs> lovely. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes time for you to see Tom Stewart's Good Boy, you better sit down. And like me, you may want to watch it a, a couple of times just to soak it in and just watch one of the best films of this Oscar season. And for all of you out there, uh, you can catch all of the replays of our interview with top film directors like Tom Stewart, as well as producers and screenwriters, actors, and more on our YouTube channel, Bond on Cinema. And we are also available on a dozen audio platforms as well, like iTunes and Spotify. So I want to thank all of you for watching and listening. And as for me, I hope to see you at the movies. <laughs>